There's no doubt the Mac Mini M4 is an awesome little computer, but it does suffer from some of the same things that a lot of Apple devices do. Never enough storage and not always the right types of ports. We're going to solve both those issues today with this Orco Minilink SSD docking station. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this Orco Minilink SSD docking station. And we've featured some Orco things on this channel before, and they reached back out and they said, hey, we got a new docking station we'd like for you to test out, so they sent this for my review. As always, this review is going to be my own. They don't get to see it before I send it out, and no money was exchanged. So let's go ahead and crack this thing out of the box and see what it comes with and see what it looks like. All right, so here is the Orco docking station itself. And let's see what it came with. Of course, we got a power adapter here to plug it into the wall so we don't have to draw all the power just off the USB port. Speaking of USB, we've got this cute little USB, and this is a 10 gigabit, nice braided cable, nice and small because this thing is going to be, you know, either on top of it or below it, wherever it's at, nice and short. It's going to virtually disappear once you plug it in. We also have a USB-C to USB-C with a USB-A adapter cable, and this one's a little bit longer, probably three feet maybe. And this is going to be used because this docking station doesn't need to be just attached to this Mac Mini. You could hook this up to basically any device that uses USB-C. You can go ahead and plug your laptop into it, use it for something like a Steam Deck or even another computer. And it's nice that they have this longer cable so that you can just unplug the Mac Mini, plug this cable in, have this run off to your other device, and then use the same ports, use the same SSD storage that's inside. That's a good way to kind of transfer files maybe from your laptop to your Mac Mini or from another desktop to your Mac Mini or back and forth. So it's nice that they gave you this cable they didn't need to. As far as SSD goes, we'll look on the bottom here to see where that installs. But we've got with that a thermal pad and a little heat sink here that you can use on your SSD. And then a little screw to secure it into the inside here. And then as an added bonus, they supplied the right size screwdriver to get this screw into the SSD mounting location. So that was nice to include that also. So basically a self-sufficient all-in-one, everything that you need to get this thing up and running. So let's take a quick second to go ahead and check out the rest of this docking station to see all the ports that are included. So to understand why these ports are important, let's go ahead and remind ourselves of what's included here on this Mac Mini. So we've got a couple USB-Cs on the front here, and then we've got the Thunderbolt ones on the back, and then we've got our monitor hookup, with HDMI, we've got our LAN hookup, and then of course power. So we're missing USB-A, we're missing card readers, and that's what we get with this little guy right here. So right in the front we've got a couple USB-As, and those are going to be 10 gigabit speed, and then we've got a full-size SD and a micro SD, and then on the far right there is a power button to turn this thing on. And then if we rotate this around to the back, We've got a couple more USB-A's. Those are going to be like just regular USB 3. So perfect for a mouse or keyboard or some kind of audio device. And then we've got a microphone input and a headphone output there. And then, of course, the USB-C that's labeled PCN, which is going to be basically your host cable to attach to your Mac Mini. So this gives us basically all the ports that we need and not any ports that we don't need. There's no HDMI on here. We've already got that on the Mac Mini itself. We don't need to have that going through the USB host cable. We're just going to keep that monitor hooked up here and then really just add kind of the legacy ports with this. Now, in addition to just that, we of course have the SSD on the bottom here. And if we look on the bottom, it's a nice little design, kind of matches the Mac Mini. And it looks like there might be some venting involved with that. There is going to be a little fan in here. We saw on the back side here, there is that little fan vent there so we can keep our SSD nice and cool. And then this little bottom plate here, it's got a little place to stick your finger, and it's just held on by some magnets. So super easy to take off, super easy to pop back on, and those magnets are secure enough that that thing's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and pop that off again and see what's inside here. And this is where we've got our NVMe port that we can plug in our SSD, and that's going to use a 2280. We've got the screw hold there to secure it down. And I believe this can use either the NVMe or the SATA SSD, depending on which type of M.2 drive that you're going to be using. 
So all together, basically everything that you need and nothing that you don't need to add to your Mac Mini. Now, if you're looking for something like this and you just want the absolute best speed you can, I believe they also make this same device with a Thunderbolt connector in the back instead of the USB 4. So in that case, you can get 40 gigabit speed going through it instead of just the 10 gigabit. But for most people, that 10 gigabit is going to be perfectly fine. I guess if you're going to be doing a lot of video editing and moving a lot of large files, then you might want to look at that 40 gigabit version. And I'll have links down in the description for both of those. But enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up to the Mac Mini and test it out. Now, before we go ahead and plug this into our Mac Mini, I'm going to go ahead and install this SSD drive in here, show you how easy it is. So I'm just gonna use this Kingston one terabyte. I'm not gonna put the heat sink on it and stuff because I'm gonna go ahead and order a larger drive. This docking station will accept up to a eight terabyte SSD drive, but I'm just gonna use this one as a demonstration. So let's go ahead and take this magnetic cover off. And then we're going to just take our SSD drive and you'll see that there's a little notch right here, just off centered. You want to make sure that that little spacer right there matches the notch on here. Now, if you have an NVMe drive, it's going to look like this. If you've got a SATA drive, it's going to be backwards like that. So you're just going to flip it so that it matches. And I just usually put it down at a little bit of an angle, like about a 30 degree angle or so. Wiggle it in and you want to make sure you seat it deep enough that you don't really see any of the gold contacts there. You don't want it to be kind of like off centered like that. Just make sure that you kind of give it a little wiggle, get it all the way in. And if you do that, when you push this down, the little Mac mounting hole should line right up. Now it's nice that they included this little screwdriver here, but I'm gonna use my trusty Strabido kit. And this comes from this little kit right here that I've been using for all of my upgrades and stuff for years and years on this channel. And if you're gonna be working on computers, I suggest you go ahead and spend the 20 bucks or whatever it is to get that, because it's gonna have the magnetic tip on here. You can see it's holding onto that screw just perfectly and the last thing you want to do is kind of try to hold that thing on and end up losing a screw down in one of these little holes here so let the magnet do all the work for you just going to hold that down with one hand and just line that screw up with the other and just put it right in there you don't have to torque it down too hard and then that's all it is slap the cover back on and we are done so let me go ahead and get this hooked up to the mac mini and I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and switched over to my capture device here so we can see what's going on. And I don't have the drive turned on yet. So let's go ahead and hit that power button on the front. And there is a fan noise. It's not super bad. It's not annoying or anything, but it is definitely there. But you want to keep that SSD drive nice and cool. So now when I plugged this in the first time, it came up and it said, hey, I don't recognize this drive because if it's a brand new drive it hasn't been initialized or formatted or anything and you're going to need to do that so when that happens to you you can just go ahead and initialize the drive if it doesn't happen automatically you can go into disk utility so just go up to your little spotlight here type in disk and you'll see disk utility and then once you do that you're going to see a drive right here that's going to have some unknown name whatever it is and you're going to just click on that you'll hit the erase button it's going to ask you for a name. I put in Orico Doc, just in case I have other drives plugged in here, I'll know which one is which. And when you have your options here of formatting, if you're only going to use this on your Mac Mini, then I would probably use APFS. But if you want it to be able to be read from other devices, like plug it into another computer, especially if it's going to be Windows or some other operating system, then I would probably choose XFAT here. So I've got it already formatted. I've got it named. So we can go ahead and go out of here. And now when I go into Finder, I can see that I've got the Orco dock right here as one of the locations. And if we go ahead and get info, you'll see that this is my XFAT formatted drive, about one terabyte in size. So we are ready to go. So what I've got here on the desktop is a couple uh, older YouTube videos that I've done. And I like to use large files just to see what kind of transfer speed we have. So I'm gonna grab this guy right down here I'm just going to drag it over here and let go, and then we'll see how fast it copies over. Ready, set, go. And about four seconds later, it was all the way over. Now, this is still just a 10 gigabit speed, but that is, for most people, plenty fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at this file here. 
and that was 3.2 gigabytes of data copied over in about four seconds. So pretty darn impressive. That's obviously calculating the write speed of the drive. Now, depending on what kind of drive you put in there, it may be faster or slower based on just the drive itself. But as far as the interface goes, that 10 gigabit interface, I say this thing is plenty fast for most daily use. Now, let's say I just drag this file over from my desktop onto this external drive, and I wanted to go ahead and share this to some other device. Maybe I'm gonna throw it on my iPad to do some editing. Maybe I'm gonna throw it on a Windows PC. All you gotta do then is just eject that disk, turn it off with the power button on the front, plug in that other longer cable, plug that into some other device, turn it back on, and that drive is going to mount right on that other operating system as long as that operating system is happy with the file format we chose. So super easy, super fast. We've got all the additional ports for the USB A's and the memory cards. If you're a photographer or if you have some other like drone or something that uses a SD card, this is going to be your best friend. So yeah, pretty impressed. All right, so there we have it. Here is the Orico dock. Now that we've gotten back off the screen capture, we've got it all installed here and I do have it turned on now. You may be able to hear that fan. You probably don't. It's again, pretty, pretty low, but we got the perfect size, perfect shape, perfect design. It's going to look great on your desk. It's going to add all that functionality that you need. You're going to be able to plug in your USB drives or your SD cards right here in the front, nice and easy. The stuff in the back can just kind of stay back there. And this is the perfect little addition to your Mac Mini M4. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks again to Orco for sending me this awesome little docking station. I'll leave some links down below so you can go check it out. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you want to check out other videos I've made about the Mac Mini M4 or basically anything geeky, go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I hope you found something helpful in this video. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.